<laughs> okay, so, so let's see, where did we get yesterday? Um, well, if you remember yesterday, we took a look at Shor's lemmas, and the, the, the thing that we were able to derive from Shor's lemmas was the fundamental orthogonality relation, and I told you that this was um, one of the most important results we could get to. Um, today, what I want to do is I want to build on that. I want to use the fundamental orthogonality relation to give you a method to tell which irreducible representations are contained in a given reducible representation. So what are we saying? We've got a representation which can be block diagonalized. And once you block diagonalize all of the matrices, you know the blocks that appear in these block diagonal matrices are themselves lower dimensional representations. Well, I would like to know which lower dimensional representations appear when I do this block diagonalization. Okay, so we're going to start off with the, the statement of the fundamental orthogonality relation. <coughs> and we wrote it in this form. Remember, we said that we would focus on a unitary representation. And um, for a unitary representation, we had the following. So we had a sum over the group. We had gamma A of T I R, gamma B of T complex conjugate J S, and this was equal to the order of the group divided by the dimension of the representation multiplied by delta I J, delta R S, delta A B. So there was our. Um, fundamental orthogonality relation. And remember, this is for a unitary representation. <coughs> remember, if it wasn't unitary, we had a gamma of t to the minus 1. By saying we've got a unitary rep, we were able to complex conjugate and transpose. So that's what we're using here. Now, I want to turn that into a statement about characters. How can I do that? How do I get a character if I'm given a group element? Take the trace, right? So we want to take the trace of this relation. So what we're going to say is um, to get a statement about characters, um, what, what, what should you do? You should set i equal to r and sum. And you should set j is equal to s and sum. Because what you're going to land up doing is you'll be taking the trace of that element, the trace of that element, and that's what we mean by the character. <coughs> so doing that, we would have sum. t is an element of g. Trace gamma a of t trace gamma b of t complex conjugate. And what is this by definition of what a character is? This is just um, a sum over all group elements. Um, this is the character in representation A of group element t. This is the character in representation b of group element T, complex conjugated. And what is this equal to? Well, let's take a look. If we set I is equal to R, so I, J, delta. Now, I'm not going to write R. I'm going to stick an I there. And I said J is equal to S, so this will be a J. And I sum, so I should be summing over I and J from 1 to the dimension of the representation times by G over dA times by delta AB. Think about these as matrices. This would be the identity matrix. This is the identity matrix. If I multiply the identity by the identity, I get the identity back. If I trace the identity, I'll get dA. So this will just be equal to G delta AB. 
And that's the relation I wanted. Um, it's this one for the characters. <clears throat> okay, now, I told you that we were going to work out a method to figure out which irreducible representations appear in a given reducible representation. And now I'll show you how we're going to do it. We're, we're, we're going to make a, um, a rather simple observation, and it's the following. Okay. If I want to take the trace of a matrix, I can perform that trace in any basis. Okay? So I'm going to take my reducible representation. I'm going to imagine that I change basis. And the basis that I'm going to work in is the basis in which my generators take their block diagonal form. So if I've got any representation which is reducible, my trace of gamma of t is going to turn into a trace. And this matrix over here I can assume is block diagonal. And there will be gamma 1 of t, a naught, a naught, gamma 2 of t, a naught, a naught, gamma 3 of t. And so it continues. Okay? Anybody who's... Yes, Martin. Okay, so let's take a look and see why. To turn this into a statement about traces, okay, we want to set i is equal to r in sum. We want to set j is equal to s in sum. So I keep this delta i j. I put it there. I now set i is equal to r. This means that this becomes a delta i. There's the i. I set j is equal to s, so that s becomes a j. And I want to now do my sum. Sure, if I multiply two identity matrices, I get an identity matrix. Okay? Sorry? One of them is redundant. That's quite true. Okay. So, so what we've got here is, um, because the trace, it doesn't matter which basis I calculate it in, I'm going to calculate this trace in the basis in which I see that this representation is reducible. So in the basis in which I see that it has this block diagonal structure. Everyone happy with that? Okay, any questions on that? Good. So what does this look like? Well, this is just, if you think about it, this is the trace of gamma 1 of t plus the trace of gamma 2 of t plus, and so it continues. Okay, everyone happy with that? So what I could do is I could say that this is a sum over all possible representations. So, so let me remind you, we're using capital R to denote the number of irreducible representations that my group has. So this will be a sum over all irreducible representations. If representation A appears n A times, then this is what I can write for the character. Is everybody happy with that? Okay, so what is this number Na? Well, to get Na, take a look at these blocks. Count how many times representation A appears. That is what Na is equal to. Okay? So, so Na is equal to number of times the irreducible representation A appears in gamma. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, so now let's see what we're going to do. Well, when I tell you that um, we can decompose a reducible representation into its irreducible components, what we're really after is this number over here, Na. If you could tell me the Na's for all A, that's the same as telling me which irreducible representations appear. So I now want to figure out how am I going to get Na. Well, I can do it as follows. You see? I'm going to take my character. So this, of course, I've just taken the trace. So this is chi of t. I'm going to take chi of t. I am going to multiply by chi 
B of T star, and I will sum over all group elements. Okay, that I can certainly do. So pick up the, reduce, the irreducible representation, B, calculate the character, complex conjugate it, multiply by the character of the representation that you have, and calculate that sum. What does this sum come out as? Well, this is equal to a sum over T as an element of G. Now let's plug in our formula for the character. This is a sum from A is equal to 1 to R <coughs> N A chi A of T. And then we have got our chi B of T star. This looks like a sum from A is equal to 1 to R N A, a sum over all T and G, chi A of T, chi B of T star. Now, I use this formula over here, which tells me that that sum is equal to the order of the group multiplied by delta AB. So this is equal to the sum from A is equal to 1 to R, N A, G, delta AB. And when I perform the sum over A, I will pick up the term with A is equal to B. So this is just G N B. So if you want to figure out these integers N B, the number of times a given irreducible representation appears in your reducible representation, you just calculate this. N B is equal to 1 over G. Um, times by the sum, t is an element of g, chi of t, chi b of t complex conjugate. So there we go. That's our tool to figure out what is the irreducible representation content in a given reducible representation. Okay. And, and now I'm going to try to give um, some sort of an answer to the question that Noreen asked yesterday, which is what is the meaning of this fundamental orthogonality relation? So I'm going to show you, in fact, from the fundamental orthogonality relation, we got this um, statement for the NB. And I'm going to show you that if we use that relation, we can reproduce some of the things that we know from quantum mechanics. To get there, we're going to introduce the concept of a direct product representation. <coughs> so let's do that direct product representations. So let's first of all take the direct product between two matrices. So direct product between two matrices. So you can play around with this. Um, if you haven't seen it before, I'm sure many of you have. So if I take the direct product of matrix A with matrix B, um, and I label the elements, so this thing I think of a matrix as well, but I label it with an index, so a double index IJ, and a second double index KT, then this would be equal to... Um, a, so, sorry, I want this to be J, S, and K, T. I can write this as A, J, K, B, S, T. If I wanted, I could also think of this as a matrix in its own right, and all that I have to do is trade this double index for a single index, and I can do it as follows. So, Let's say that, um, so I'm going to write this as A times B, I, J. So if you wanted to do some calculations, say, on a computer or something like that, it's easiest to trade it for these indices over here. But you'll see with our explicit manipulations, it's easiest to use these indices. So I'm going to give you both of them. Okay? Um, how do we trade um, 
two indices for one, well, for example, we could do it as follows. Um, let's imagine that A itself is an M by M matrix. 